what's the potential of these gates in their ability to access movement in three cardinal planes or direction. A Feldenkrais lesson is designed to increase our capacity to learn how to sense, differentiate, and integrate these three planes of movement within our human self. So these movements, first, forward and backward. You would know this as if my head was moving in the direction of nodding yes, or side to side, as though my head could tilt from ear to shoulder. And the third plane of direction would be turning, like turning right and left, like my head nodding no. So let's come back to how counter rotations happen locally, okay? So you, we would know it in our Feldenkrais method, like the eyes moving in opposition to the skull. Regionally, like the lower extremity here, counter rotating, the lower extremity here counter rotating to the pelvis over a local gate here at the hip and counter rotations that occur globally. For example, in walking where the shoulder girdle counter rotates to the pelvic girdle or they're moving opposite to each other. But where in the spine does this counter rotation occur? And that's where integral human gait invites a closer look. What if we could change this neutral axis of rotation of these two girdles with not this commonly experienced waist area? It's here at the top of the pelvis. This is also the area where the lumbar spinal level L4 and L5 is, where a lot of degeneration and compression takes place. Also, how about here? at the base of the neck or the cervical spine, another area that's commonly misplaced as a counter rotation level. What if you could shift your thinking to the lower 12 ribs and the lower six thoracic vertebra, and they could support pelvic girdle, side bending, and rotation? Now, this could eliminate this lower lumbar rotation that takes place in contributing to shear, compression, and degeneration. Because structurally, the lumbar vertebra were not meant to rotate. Equally, what if the upper 12 ribs and the upper six thoracic vertebra and, I'm gonna say and, the cervical vertebra C2 through C7, C2 through C7, the neck, supported shoulder girdle rotation and thoracic rotation in the front of the oh, We couldn't hear that last part. Can you say that again? So what if the upper 12 ribs and the upper six thoracic vertebrae, I hear that I must be in the room, and cervical side bent, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. What if the upper 12 ribs and upper six thoracic vertebra and cervical or neck vertebra, I said C2 through C7, supported shoulder girdle and thoracic rotation and side bending? Now, this will be eliminating a lot of the mid and lower cervical shear and compression and maybe even neck pain. That would make this neutral axis of rotation for the shoulder girdle and the pelvic girdle somewhere here between T7 and T9. Located on the back of the body, that's like at the lower aspects of the scapula or shoulder blades. And on the front side of the body, just below the sternum or breastbone. This level of counter rotation facilitates and enhances this very important important proportional side bending that you see here along the entire length of the spine, which I think is another regional gait. The multi-level interdependent counter rotations let the brain know that these gates have access to the ability to automatically respond using powerful lighting reactions and equilibrium reactions. Now, 
This is going to orientate us upright if we get off balance. You may not know it, but there are 168 interdependent possible connections between the 12 thoracic vertebra and 24 ribs. Now that's powerful. It influences a vast amount of information coming into our nervous system. So take serious these gates' ability to feed forward rich sensory information to the brain. They're like your personal backup system, unconsciously monitoring and activating the muscular skeletal system to make sure you can safely maneuver from point A to point B. 